All right, so um, our next honoree received his uh, law degree from Georgetown Law School in 1984, and he graduated with the highest honors possible. And while he was there, he published uh, numerous articles for their esteemed law journal. And he began his career as a tax attorney at the famed law firm of Milbank, Tweed, Hadley, and McCloy. And then later, he joined uh, Skadden, Arps, Marr, and Flom. Is that right? Is that where Jerry Lewis gets his taxes done? Or <laughs> Skadden, Arpsmeyer, and Slom. <laughs> I've got a Krellman that I need to put a red flag with the things. And... But anyway, at the, with the Skadden and Flom guys, uh, he uh, was a tax analyst. And took, but he really took care of some complex transactions like financings and mergers and acquisitions. And then he formed Bay Star Capital Management, LLC, and then LRG Capital Group, which fund growth-oriented businesses, and they operate a global investment and uh, banking business for private companies all across uh, the country. Very successful group. You could, you could probably start recruiting Flom at this point. <laughs> He'd want to come over. Uh, in addition to his uh, business career, very successful, he regularly speaks at both national and international private equity and hedge fund conferences and events. He's written numerous articles on investment strategy. He is a dedicated father, but also a philanthropist. And in addition to his involvement with the ADA, he serves as a board member for several other charitable organizations. And in his spare time, if you can figure out how he ha comes up with that, he's also a very accomplished jazz musician and uh, he plays with bands throughout the Bay Area. So take a look now at what makes our next honoree a very special father. Five words I would use to describe Larry are ambitious, caring, charismatic, a world-class friend, and fun. I've known Larry Goldfarb since we were 16 years old. So that, if you want to date me, uh, is about 35 years. I asked Larry to be the best man at my wedding. And when Larry was married, he asked me to be the best man at his wedding. So we, we shared that, uh, that experience together. We both went to law school. And now we share a partnership in the investment business. Larry brings something very special to everything that he does. And uh, it's, it's a great pleasure being his friend and being his business partner. Larry is the kind of guy that everybody wants to know. He's got this charisma and this, this energy that takes over a room that just says, wow. I think what surprises me most about Larry is that he's one of those souls that just, he's so great at business and he's so creative and musical and also a great friend and everything. I think it's a, I think it's a unique thing these days to find someone quite like that. Uh, my view of how Larry balances the um, importance of family and the importance of his career is that Julian comes first. Julian is his son. I am Julian and I am 12 years old. I think my dad is cool because he can do lots of stuff that normal dads can't do sometimes, like get backstage passes or meet famous people. Both Larry and I share not only our own bond, but the bond of fatherhood of two special needs children. I think it absolutely raised Larry's awareness uh, of how important uh, fatherhood is. He loves his son very much, and Julian loves his dad very much. My words that I think are about my dad are um, funny, smart, talented, heavy working, and special. It's hard to judge what fatherhood means at any particular time. I think it changes depending upon where you are and what the circumstances are. For me specifically, um, there's two problems that present themselves on a daily basis. One is I have a special needs child. The other thing is, being a single parent. Receiving this honor has allowed me to talk to my son 
about fatherhood and the importance of father-son relationships. Um, it's allowed me to call family members who I wouldn't otherwise have called and say, you know what, this is an opportunity for us to get together. Larry takes it upon himself to give his time and his money and his network to support issues that are important in our time. The reason I'm associated with diabetes is through a very, very good friend of mine by the name of Rocky Lang. His daughter, Nikki, uh, was diagnosed with type one diabetes when she was a young child, which was traumatic, obviously, for Rocky's whole family. So Rocky came up with this idea of a doll by the name of Joe Toucan to help families better cope with just the cold shock of learning that they have diabetes. And I said, okay, let's make it happen. We found supporters for distribution and we're gonna be launching the Joe Toucan um, Project doll this summer. We have this thing running from nowhere and it's gotten critical acclaim. This is quite literally a byproduct of just how good a friend Larry is. Larry uh, enjoys life. He can be as serious and as um, exacting as anyone I've known in business. And he can be as light and musical and entertaining. And in the pure joy of the moment, the length of our relationship is only equaled by the depth of our relationship. Larry is definitely the family that I've chosen. There's a duality to this whole thing about being named Father of the Year. Uh, on, the, on the one hand, it's sort of obnoxious, okay? On the other hand, it's a great platform. And what am I using it for? I'm using it to raise money. I think on this particular occasion, I just want to see Larry just stand up and own it. And I think today and tonight, he is the Father of the Year, and he should be. We need to stop diabetes because we can. Um, and we can if we have the money to do so. That's why raising money for the American Diabetes Association is so important, because it can save a life where we can save a life. Please. So, God rarely takes a minute out of his time to speak to me. But the other night, it was Tuesday night, I'm sitting and I'm watching the Celtics on my couch, and I'm going, oy vey. And I'm looking at my tickets, which are behind the bench of the Lakers. <laughs> so I'm feeling not so good. But then, Julian, stay up there. Where are the girls? I need the girls. <laughs> Bring me the girls. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I'm sitting there, I'm feeling not so good, I'm not going to Laker game, okay. But then, you know, you've got mail on your email, you know. So, all of a sudden, I get these heartwarming.